In God's gospel for us this week, according to the writer of John, Jesus speaks to us about blindness and sight, a truly Lenten exercise of examining our individual and corporate lives. Embedded in our gospel narrative about blindness and sight are also Jesus' words about short-sightedness and vision, about self-preservation and bold vulnerability, about complacency and imagination, and finally and ultimately and once again as always, God's gospel that is Christ Jesus crucified, resurrected, and present and on the loose out in the world today. God's gospel is about hope and the promise of new life for the world. And what, pray tell, given our current struggles with the COVID-19 pandemic, is more salient than the promise of hope and new life. In God's gospel for us this week, according to the writer of John, Jesus comforts and challenges us with these words of hope and new life. Look for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines, Jesus said. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the light of the world. As today's story goes, Jesus gives sight to a blind man. A single person miracle whose holy effects ripple through a family, ripple through the religious establishment of the time, and now ripple through you and me and a faith community called Christ Lutheran Church in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Let's take a few moments together today to catalog the narrative's major moments. Firstly, the blind man himself, his parents, and the religious authorities with whom he finds himself in conflict are all short-sighted, failing to see what it is that Jesus is actually saying and doing. Yet our story today isn't about short-sightedness. Our story today is about recognizing what God is up to in the world then and now. Secondly, when asked to bear witness to Jesus' healing of their son, the parents cowered in fear, afraid they would lose their worshiping community if they testified to Jesus' truth for them. Yet our story isn't about self-preservation either. Our story is about recognizing what God is up to in the world then and now. Thirdly, the religious authorities were, instead of getting caught up in the promise of possibility, satisfied by and therefore content with maintaining the status quo, arguing that Jesus is breaking the commandment of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Yet our story isn't about religious establishment complacency. Our story is about what God is up to in the then and now. Friends and neighbors in Christ, what does all of this mean for us today? What is God up to today in the world that God was up to in the world then and what God has been up to for all time? About 350 years ago, a shipload of travelers landed on the northeast coast of America. The first year they established a town site. The next year they elected a town government. The third year the town government planned to build a road five miles westward into the wilderness. In the fourth year the people tried to impeach their own government because they thought it was a complete waste of public funds and time to build a road five miles westward into the wilderness. Who needed to go there anyway? 
Everything they needed for daily life was within the township boundaries already, wasn't it? Friends and neighbors in Christ, please observe with me. Here was a passel of people, risk takers, adventure seekers, trust havers, with the gumption to travel 3,000 miles across tempestuous seas, overcoming great hardships to arrive on new shores and witness new horizons. But in just a few years, this same people were not able to see the present reality for what it was, let alone imagine the point and the purpose of venturing even five miles further out of town. Friends and neighbors in Christ, let's take a few moments to introspectively examine ourselves as a public faith of community this Lenten season. What is the mission and vision of Christ Lutheran Church, as well as all congregations throughout Christendom? In God's gospel for us this week, according to the writer of John, Jesus comforts and challenges us with words of hope and new life. Look for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, Jesus said, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the light of the world. Friends and neighbors in Christ, what is the mission and the vision of disciples of Jesus Christ today? The same as it was when Jesus gave sight to the man born blind 2,000 years ago. God has the gift of sight for Christ Lutheran Church. God has a vision for Christ Lutheran Church. God is acting boldly with and for Christ Lutheran Church. God is calling Christ Lutheran Church out into the world to serve our neighbors in new ways, responding to a COVID-19 riddled world with renewed emphasis on good old fashioned community delivered digitally. Friends and neighbors of Christ, Jesus is our vision. Jesus is our boldness. Jesus is our imagination. Jesus is our hope and God's promise of new life. A crucified and resurrected Jesus communicated in a new way is also God's grace of hope and new life for all people and the entirety of God's creation. By the power of the Holy Spirit then, let us all be healed of our blindness. From now on, seeing the world as God sees it. And from now on, seeing your neighbor as God sees you.